Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to go through solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSA Green Booklet Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 3, questions 10 to 13. And it's going to focus more on uh, Newton's third law of motion and, I guess, how to manipulate uh, center of mass and understand uh, the forces of gravity and how they work on objects. So Newton's third law of motion, it states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. So if we take a simple example here of books on the ground, we see that the books themselves exert a force downwards onto the ground, whereas the ground itself exerts an equal and opposite force upwards to keep the books flat on the ground. Now, it's important to know it's, it's not that essential for this unit, but because they are opposing forces, but they are equal, however, they do have different signs. So one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. It doesn't matter which one you assign as positive and negative, as long as you just understand that because they're opposing forces, they have different, I guess, uh, signs. So that's something important to know, not necessarily for this unit, but for other units or for other GAMSA style questions, you might get pinned if you don't know uh, the difference between these. So um, before we move on to the stimulus, I have this drawn this little schematic of the, um, I guess, the bedding with the patient on top. We were told that there was a scale that measured at point X 700 newtons and at point Y there was 800 newtons. And we can then, I guess, draw the center of mass. And you can see it's not flush in the middle. And that's because the center of mass is going to be shifted more towards Y because it has the greater mass or I guess the greater force or the greater Newtons. And if you actually draw here a line length L, you can actually differentiate between the distances of Y to the center of mass and X to the center of mass. But we'll go through that in the next couple of questions. First, let's just get the ball rolling and start off with the uh, question 10, which states the total force exerted by the floor on the bed is, so we know that X, from what we've been told, is 700 newtons, Y is 800 newtons. So if we add those two get together, we get 700 newtons plus 800 newtons equals 1500 newtons. So that's the total of the bedding with the female as well. So um, just note that for the next question. But for this question, we're, just, um, we're more interested in the total force exerted by the floor on the bed. Remember what we said here in this example? So if the bedding and the person is exerting a force of 1,500 newtons, therefore, let's say this is the floor, the floor is going to exert an equal and opposite reaction, so Newton's third law of motion. So it's going to exert 1,500 newtons. But it's important to note here that because they are opposing factors, you'd say negative 1,500. But I mean, if you want to change the signs, you could have that as positive as negative, or you can have this as negative, this as positive. It doesn't matter. But just note because they're opposing forces, they have to have differing signs. But in this question, you don't need to know that. They're just more interested in the magnitude. And the answer is, in fact, of course, going to be C, 1,500 newtons. Cool. So if we move on to the next question, so question 11, it states the mass of the patient is, so again, we know that the mass of the patient and the bedding is 1,500 newtons. In the stimulus, we're told that the patient, the mass of the bed and the bedding, sorry, is 90 kilograms. So that's excluding the patient. So we know mass of the ma bedding and the bed is 90 kilograms. Remember, we're told in the stimulus as well that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second per second. So we know that the gravity is 10 meters per second per second. Now, I'm writing all the units. In the GAMSA, you might take shortcuts, but that's only if you're comfortable. Please, if you're not comfortable with mathematics, leave the units because it helps big time in the future when um, you have to obviously... Uh, use different kinds of units, SI units, and you might, the training wheels might fall, fall apart. So please leave the units if you're not that comfortable. But I mean, in the GAMSA, if you want to take them away, fair enough. But just know that some GAMSA questions, 
love to get you to manipulate mathematics and units. So just keep that in mind. So we know therefore the force of the bedding alone. So force equals mass times acceleration or acceleration there of gravity. So it's going to be 90 kilograms times 10 meters per second per second. So we know therefore it's going to be 900. So it's kilograms meters per second per second, which is also the same as a Newton. So it's the SI unit for Newton. So please keep that in mind. So we know that the mass of the bed and bedding is 900 Newtons. And we know that the total of the mass of the bedding, bedding and the girl or the woman is 1500 Newtons. So therefore, the mass of the patient is going to be 1500 Newtons minus 900 Newtons, which equals 600 Newtons. So your answer is going to be, oh, well, actually, don't jump the gun, 600 Newtons. And then now we have to convert it to a mass. So remember, force equals mass times gravity. We know that. So force is 600 Newtons equals mass times 10 meters per second. So again, you just have to move it to one side. So 600 divided by 10 is going to equal, I mean, let's keep the units, but it's the same principle here. If um, we keep the units and do this, it's going to be 600 divided by 10 is going to equal 60 kilograms. So I, I just quickly did a cheat, but I would, if I was you, leave the units because um, it can obviously help in the future for other questions, but the answer is 60. So the answer is going to be B. Now, if we move on to question 12, it says, now this is, this is a tricky one. So um, this one requires a lot of conceptualization. And if I was you, I, I actually, when I looked at this question, I just did it in my head rather than using maths. But we'll do it using maths just to show you mathematically and we can probably conceptualize. So it says, suppose the length of the bed here is L. So they're saying this is L. Um, it says, uh, at what horizontal distance from Y? So we're looking for this here. At what horizontal distance from Y is the center of gravity of the patient? Bed and bedding considered a single body located. So we're trying to look for the actual length between here, here and here. Before we even do any mathematics, just think about it logically here. The center of mass is going to be shifted towards Y, which means the distance from this side is going to be greater than the distance from this side. Because think about it, if the center of mass is shifted more towards y, it's going to be shorter. So the distance is going to be shorter between center of mass and y than it is between x and center of mass. So you can conceptualize straight away that the value has to be small compared to x. So how do we begin to get this value? So remember, the center or well, the mass of everything together is 1,500 newtons. So if we want to find I guess the influence of the uh, mass on this side or for the length, uh, what you do is, let's just say we've got a 700 Newton and we've got an 800 Newton. So what we do is we just do 700 Newton divided by 1500 Newton equals, so we just cross off the zeros, 7 over 15. L and Another side is going to be 800 newtons divided by 1500 newtons equals, so remove the two zeros, so you're left with 8 on 15L. So where do we assign, you might say, oh, 700 newtons, so it's over 1500 newtons, 7 over 15, we'll put it here. And then you might say, oh, 800 newtons divided by 1500 newtons, 8 over 15, put it here. However, remember, conceptualize what's happening. The length here between y and center of mass has to be shorter than the length here between x and center of mass because the center of mass is tilted towards y, which means the answer here has to be the smallest of the two. So therefore, you know straight away, don't get confused, this is the trick here, this is how they trick the students or the people sitting in the GAMSA. The length here has to be 7 over 15 L, whereas here is 8 over 15 L. So the mass is distributed unevenly. 
That's the key here, which means the length between center of mass and X and Y is going to be obviously skewed towards whichever has a greater center of mass or the least center of mass. So that's the trick. And it's easy to get to fall for the trick. But um, if you conceptualize it, you won't fall for it. So the, the answer for 12, therefore, is going to be A, 7 over 15L. So the last question is actually a nice and easy one. Um, so question 13, um, it says, suppose the nurse uses two identical weighing scales instead of one, and they place the pair of legs at X uh, on a scale A, and the same for Y on scale B, because in the stimulus we're told that he used one scale on each side. In this instance, we put a scale on both both X and Y. Now, this is actually straightforward because think about it logically here. Force equals mass times acceleration. We haven't changed. So in this instance, acceleration is gravity. By putting the scales, I mean, simultaneously, we haven't changed the mass of the object, nor have we changed the, the acceleration of gravity. We haven't changed anything. So you can ensure straight away that force is not going to change. So therefore, question 13 has to be A. So scale at A is going to be 700 newtons, and scale at B is going to be 800 newtons. Nothing's changed. So again, conceptualize it. You'll get the correct answer. Now, if you have any questions from this unit, please post your comments in the uh, uh, post them below. And um, if you do want to contact us directly, we'd love to help you. Thanks for your time. Bye now.